The opinions expressed on this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial advisor, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. This is the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Good morning and welcome to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. I'm your host, Margie Shard, and I am in the studio today with Jen Verscher, Director of Operations from Shard Financial. And later, we will also be talking with Christy Candleberry of the Christy Candleberry team at Remax Grand and Rebecca Bartley with Icon Mortgage. Jen, thanks for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me in. So, Jen, I wanted to have you in because you and I read this really great article uh, a few weeks ago that Tony Robbins actually wrote. And for those of you who don't know who Tony Robbins is, he's, um, what would you call him, a coach, motivational? A life coach, motivational speaker. Okay. So visualize what you want and go get it type of person, which I just love about him. But this article that Tony Robbins wrote was, um, it really made a lot of sense to me. And um, there, there's always... You know, in the back of our heads, we live in Michigan, so for a lot of people, we think, well, how would it be to live in a warmer climate? Um, and then some people like the snow, which is great. Some people don't want to go anywhere that's warm. That's, you know, so everybody, each to each their own. But but one of the things that Tony Robbins was talking about in this article was how you could drastically increase your quality of life by just moving to different states. And it really played into a lot of the issues, Jen, that we deal with with our clients on a day-to-day financial planning basis. And so I wanted to talk about this. Um, this this overall article, it, it, it talked about if you could save 10 to 20% of your current costs and invest them, that you basically would obviously be able to get to retirement quicker um, and get to go do those things that you want or maybe achieve some other goals, whether it's buying your dream home or your yacht or whatever it may be. <laughs> I'll take the yacht. Um, yeah. So, so let's, Jen, let's talk about this. You know, this, this point of, you know, in the article, he says, you know, you could literally move and I'm not, I'm not advocating for people moving out of Michigan. So let's, let's get that off the bat. But no matter where you're at in the country and you're listening to this, you know, you may be living in a very high um, cost um, city um, where maybe you just move to different cities or maybe you're very, um, you know, your, your costs for your, your housing alone, you know, you add up the houses, the taxes, the insurance, the, you know, the, the utility bills, and it's really putting a big damper on your overall financial plan. So, so let's talk about this, John. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, um, so Tony Robbins, he lived in California and where income taxes are extremely high and he moved to Florida. And, um, you know, he spent a little bit more on a house, but, you know, what he was saving on income taxes, you know, um, helped cover the cost of his housing now. Which, you know, we have a lot of clients that are in Florida, actually. And a lot of times they're debating about becoming residents of Florida or staying residents of Michigan. And and while a lot of things factor in that, especially because a lot of them have houses here that maybe are worth more than their house down in Florida, where it may make more sense to be a Michigan resident and have, um, you know, that homestead tax exemption, um, or maybe it's for medical reasons with their health insurance. But you have to really run numbers on that because Florida doesn't have a state income tax. Right. No, they don't. And so that 5% roughly that, you know, Michigan's around, it's, it's just under 5%. Um, but California's was pretty, you know, pretty expensive. And But the other thing too was the cost, you know, there were other costs that he was talking about besides just the state income tax and the price of housing. Right. I mean, there's other things, um, you know, that he was spending his money on, such as housing, um, food, transportation, that were all extremely high in the state he was living in. So one of the things that this article that Tony Robbins was talking about was what are the things that you want for your lifestyle? And and Jen, we talk about lifestyle so much with our clients. You know, doing financial planning, there's no way I think you can get around or you should get around talking about lifestyle. What are when we're talking about lifestyle, 
tell our listeners what are some of the things that we're discussing with our clients about lifestyle. So some of the things that we talk to our clients about, um, you know, travel, what kind of hobbies do they do? Are they are they a hunter? Do they like golf? Um, are they wine connoisseurs? Ooh, I like that one. I know you would. <laughs> uh, you know, do you like to ski, snowboard? You know, uh, are you an avid boater? You know, how, you know, how would your life be if you could get boat nine months a year or 12 months a year versus three months? Right, exactly. Would you be happy? Right. I, I would love that personally, but so... What Tony Robbins is talking about in this article is for generations, Americans keep talking about, well, I'm going to wait till retirement to go do those things. And one of the things the article is talking about is what if you could do that now? What if you could really make a lifestyle change where you're able to go ahead and make that change so you can do those activities now instead of having to wait till retirement and have a better overall quality of life and lifestyle? Um, you know, there's seven states with no income tax, Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. Um, and I know we have a lot of clients that, you know, a lot of times want a second home for vacation purposes. Um, and also down the road may consider moving or, or retiring to those places. And so I think, you know, that's a big thing, but also if you look at what a million dollar house costs, you know, in let's say Washington, D.C., it's just a fraction of that in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so we also have to look at if there's a state that you really want to live in because you're able to now go do those activities that you want to do, is it actually cost, can, can you actually make it happen? Right. And he makes some valid points because, you know, I, I personally think that you really could make it happen. You know, why wait till retirement when, you know, maybe you're not going to be in the best health to do all the things that you enjoy. And we do see that. Right. We, you know, one of the things we also see with clients, we talk a lot about this natural progression of retirement. You know, normally, when you first retire, you're pretty excited, you're typically in, in decent health, and you want to go do things. And so you travel and maybe um, go see your grandkids more, take your grandkids places, um, do those hobbies more. But then, you know, you get around 70, 75, sometimes, sometimes later, depending on health, everyone's different. But we see a natural progression of slowdown, don't we, Jen? We do. Clients do slow down at, you know, 70 and up. And, and they tell us some a lot of times it's not because they feel bad, they just don't feel like maybe dealing with the airports or um, being in a car or they just they just want to be home more. And so you just start to slow down. So the whole point of Tony Robbins article was, what if you could live your lifestyle now and you don't have to necessarily be a multimillionaire or retired to go do that? Right. It's all about being, you know, more efficient and more effective with your earnings and savings and, you know, getting on the path to financial freedom. And so I think, again, we talk a lot about budget in this show, but, um, you know, we're talking this show's really about financial health for the modern family. And I think Tony Robbins topic goes so good because as a modern family, you know, we're running around day to day and, you know, maybe we just have kids or we don't have kids or we're you know, taking care of our parents and our kids, um, or we're even retired. And, and we're part of this modern family, all of us. And with technology, it's go, 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 go. And we can't always, you know, we know we need to be doing financial planning. We know we need to, you know, be looking at what our vision is and, and how to get there. But it seems very complicated. And so that's where, you know, financial planning and, and that's where we really start to help people, Jen. Right. Yes. Um, financial plan is key. And budgeting. So budgeting is always the first thing. You know, if you want to make this happen, if you have a vision of what you want and you don't want to wait till retirement, if you want to do it in retirement, it's great. We'll help you get there. But if you don't want to wait till retirement and you want to make that happen, let's say in the next year or five years, then we've got to start looking at that budget and what's coming in versus what's going out. And maybe you're making some of those smaller sacrifices now so you can, you know, make that happen sooner. But we also have to start looking at other things. You know, taxes are a big thing. Housing's a big thing. 
And, and what if you did move, you know, what's the realization that if you did, you know, if you could change your jobs to a different location or maybe keep doing what you're doing, but doing it remotely, if you could do that and be where you want to be and have that lifestyle you want and also have a, a less cost for that, then really what's stopping you? That's a big question. That right? is a big question. You know, I think, you know, for many people, it might just be fear, you know, leaving family behind. But there's always plenty the unknown. But and there is fam- family's a big part. So um, but but if you want, if you could take and look at your expenses and really, really cut those down. And if you could move, you know, if you're if you're in New York or L.A. and you've got extraordinary rent amounts or let's say let's say you're living on a lake in Michigan and you know you're in a million dollar home and you're really working hard every month and the reason you're working hard is to pay that house payment and to pay those utility bills and to all the upkeep that goes with that does it make sense to possibly get all out of that house into something smaller even if it's for a few years so that a few years down the road, you can actually go do what you want. I think that totally makes sense as long as you're willing to give it up. Absolutely. So so that's just the concept of what we're talking about and, and where financial planning comes in and, and really thinking outside the box of I don't have to wait exactly until retirement. If I want to make this come true, I can actually possibly make it come true sooner and actually in the close future. So Um, When we get back, we're going to talk more about um, purchasing a second home um, or an investment piece of property. Jen and I have a lot of clients doing this. Um, And we're going to talk about all the different ramifications that come with that. So uh, you're listening to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Stay tuned. Margie Shard and her team can help you through life's transitions. Whether it's retirement, widowhood, divorce, or remarriage, call 810-714-5566 for a free consultation. With Shard Financial, you'll get answers and results. Her office is at 1537 North Leroy Street in Fenton. Log on to her website at shardfinancial.com or call 810-714-5566 today. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor member, FINRA SIPC. Looking for a mortgage loan and need someone that you can trust with the biggest financial decision that your family will make? Hi, I'm Rebecca Bartley from Icon Mortgage, and I have 17 years of experience in this business. I offer on-the-spot pre-approvals so that you can start the search for your new home. From zero down rural development loans to conventional and veterans loans, I can make it quick, simple, and all understandable. Put your trust in me, Rebecca Bartley, and call me today to take that first step toward home ownership. You can reach me at 810-516-4227 or go to my website at RebeccaBartley.com. Equal housing letter at MLS 311852. Are you getting ready to sell or buy your home? Need some real, honest advice? A realtor who will actually get real with you? No false promises? Just plain, good old-fashioned care, trust, and advice? Then you need to get Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Cannelberry of REMAX Grand. I have 20 years' experience in this area, and the number one value I bring to my clients is trust and honesty. I get real with them, and I get them moving in the right direction. Call 810-691-5914. That's 691-5914. Or go to getchristy.com. Stand out from your competition with a custom-made dynamic website from Shard Marketing and Branding, your small business marketing solution. Whether it's website design, social media management, referral marketing, event management, graphic design, community engagement, and business development services, Shard Marketing and Branding is your small business marketing solution. Call 810-577-5291 or log on to shardmb.com today. Welcome back to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. I'm your host, Margie Shard, and in the studio with me is my Director of Operations, Jen Brashear, over at Shard Financial. Jen and I have been talking about this article that Tony Robbins wrote that discussed if you could create the vision for your life that you have in retirement before retirement, is it worth looking at? And so one of the things that we wanted to talk about was Second homes, um, whether it's for vacation or or investment, you know, maybe an investment home that you go on vacation a little bit with, but mostly you rent out. 
um, because we have we, we have a lot of, of clients that either want to do this or, or are doing this. We- yeah, right, Mar- um, right, Margie. We probably hear it about 50% of the time with clients that come in, you know, that they'd like a vacation home. And we probably have another 25, 30% that actually own a vacation home. Yes. So, so this is a big thing. And there's a lot of questions that go around, should I have a second home? Should I do it before retirement? Should I do it in retirement? If I want to do it before retirement, how do I make it work? How do I make it work once I'm retired? So Jen, what, what are some of the things that, you know, that, that we really talk a lot to our clients about regarding that second home? Well, there's a lot of expenses that clients uh, forget about or they just, you know, haven't thought about uh, besides the sales price or, you know, what the mortgage will be on the second home. And, um, you know, some of those things are property taxes, you know, depending on the value of the second home, it's going to affect what your taxes are. And if it's, you know, it's not your primary residence, so you don't have that homestead exemption. Correct. You would lose the homestead exemption. You know, there's homeowners insurance, you know, is is the home in a flood zone or a hurricane area, you're going to pay more in insurance. You know, you've got the cost of utilities, you've got your gas, electric, you know, do you want cable in your vacation home? There's, you know, maintenance fees, upkeep of the home, you know, emergency plumbing issues, suddenly you need, you know, your pipes are frozen, you need to take care of that, or your home needs a new furnace, you know. And those are all things that if you're, you know, if you're not right there, um, you know, if it's if it's an hour away, it, it may not be that big of a of a deal. If you're just buying a place, maybe up north or something like that. But we've got a lot of clients who own f- homes in Florida, California, uh, Texas, North Carolina. You know, a lot far away across the country. And so, if you're not there, you really need to have someone that you've hired, typically, unless you have a really nice neighbor, um, who can you know take care of these things for you. Right. I mean, if you're not there and it's summertime, you know, the grass needs to be mowed or in the winter you might need snow removal. So, it, you know, looks like somebody's coming and going so that the house isn't vacant. And then also you got to keep in mind that, you know, if this is a second home for personal use or whether you've purchased it for investment property, there's different tax rules that apply and you, you need to make sure you consult with a tax professional. And your financial planner. Yes. <laughs> so, Jen, you know, we have a lot of clients that we know that once they retire, they want to have a vacation home. And then a lot of clients are maybe 10, 15 years away from retirement and, and they want that home now. They want to start seeing where they're going to be. They want to start going down there. Maybe they've got longer vacation um, days through their employer or more flexible time. And they really want to start um, utilizing their their free time in the place where they want to be. So we we get this we get this question a lot with clients about they're going to buy a house and possibly rent it out um, and then use it, you know, maybe five, six weeks a year or maybe even only one or two. But their main thing is going to be to rent it out. What are some of the things that clients should be really looking at before they buy that house to say, OK, yes, this is going to be a good thing for me or this may not be the correct time to go do this? Some of the things they should look for is how attractive is that property to renters? You know, if it's in a warmer climate, is there a pool or a hot tub? Oh, yeah, you got to have that. Oh, definitely. So, (laughs) um, you know, what type of area is the property in? Is there, is it in a vacation area, like, for example, Orlando? You know, are there things to do? Um, How large is the home? A lot of times when people are looking to rent a vacation home, it's because they have a large family or there's a couple families, you know, going on vacation together. Which if you're going to buy a larger home, typically you're looking at a higher investment price, a a lot more um, expenses on upkeep and maintenance, Mm -hmm. you know, those utility bills. There's a, a whole bigger array of expenses that you really need to work with your financial planner on because at the end of the day, you, you have to be prepared that it may not rent out. And if you are responsible for hundred percent of those costs, how does that affect you right now? And then five years, 10 years, and all the way up through retirement, how is that going to affect your plan? Right. And you know, you may want to, or need to rent a property or hire a property manager, someone that's going to come in and, and handle, uh, 
the advertising for the rental and screening of tenants and you should screen tenants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking. You might want to. Listeners, please uh. screen your tenants. <laughs> But but cleaning, you know, you're not there to go clean every day, right? So, Especially or, if it's out of state, right? So or not every day, but you know, when you're when your renters mm-hmm. leave, um, even if they don't trash the place, it's still going to need to be cleaned. Um, but but also, if they do trash the place, you have to be prepared for the fact that you may have to redo a lot of things. Um, and you know, the rental contracts, making sure that you have, you know, we we've had a lot of clients over the years that learned some very hard lessons because they didn't have good rental contracts. And so my advice to our listeners is if you're going to have a property that you rent out, you need to see an attorney and have a good rental contract written up. And you need to be taking deposits. Even if it's your friends, you need to be taking deposits. (laughs) Deposits are there for a reason. So, um, you know, one of the other things that we really have to look at when clients come in and say, I want to buy that rental now, or I'm sorry, I want to buy my second home now. I don't want to wait till retirement or now I've hit retirement and you know, I'm, I, I'm ready. I, I want to buy this, this home. We've got a lot of things that we have to look at on their financial plan. Right. I mean, we need to make sure that, you know, if they're buying it before retirement, you know, are they still going to be able to save enough for retirement? You know, is that mortgage now on the second home, is that going to take away from, you know, what they're putting into, you know, their 401k or their IRAs? And if not, how many years does that mean they have to work? How much longer do they have to work? Or maybe do they now um, have to go get a part-time income, which, you know, for some clients, if they're, let's say down in Florida, they're they're okay if they have to go get a part-time, in, you know, a part-time job for some extra income because they're in Florida. Right. So, and, you know, maybe they're getting a part time job on the golf course and, you know, they're going to get free um, golf, golf, you know, uh, which is a big one, which for some of our clients, yes, is a big one. Or, you know, are they debt free? You know, can they really afford this? Are there other expenses that they have coming up? You know, do they have college that they're planning on paying for, you know, children's weddings? I think another thing that comes up often is clients wanting to take money out of their retirement plans to go buy the house. And that's a big no-no for us. And Jen, can you talk about why that's a big no-no? Well, you know, depending on how old they are, um, you know, if they're under 59 and a half, they're going to have to pay penalties. Um, They're going to have to pay taxes on that income or they're going to have to- Regardless. Yeah. Regardless how old, they're definitely going to have taxes. Yes. So a lot of times we're telling clients, you know, you're, if you take out a hundred thousand or 200,000 or 300 or 400 or 500,000, You have to take out some, you know, typically 50 to sometimes 60 percent of what you need for that house in order to pay the taxes. So think about if if you're going to go buy a five hundred thousand dollar house and you want to pay cash and you're taking out of your retirement plan. Let's say you are of retirement age even and you don't have that 10, 20 percent penalty on top of taxes. You know, you're looking at for five hundred thousand realistically taking out eight nine hundred thousand dollars just to cover the taxes and so that's not the best financial decision would you agree john oh i totally agree and so a lot of times we have to then look at you know and especially with rates as low as they are you know does a mortgage make sense and then what would that plan be to pay that off um but the other thing we have to talk oh, sorry Jim. oh no i was just going to say you know there's we can run the scenarios we can look at you know financial plans and you know, estimate what it would be if they, you know, paid for that home lump sum or if they did a mortgage, you know, we regardless can, of whether it's coming from a retirement account or right, not on that yes, lump sum. Yes, we can run different scenarios. So when we look at renting, you know, when we look at um, the vacation, let's say you're retired now, or let's say you're pre-retirement, you want to start, you know, traveling more and using a house. We really urge our clients to look at the difference of renting versus owning. Right. There's a lot of, um, you know, things that clients don't always consider. You know, if they're not planning on owning the home for a long period of time, it may make sense for them just to simply, you know, rent a home for a couple months out of the year. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, really looking at comparing what they would spend on the rental versus what they would spend owning it. And again, going back to the insurance, the utilities, the property taxes, the maintenance fees, um, factoring in unforeseen costs that you may have, 
you know, to look at a worst case scenario. Right, definitely. Because I mean, you you can't predict if your furnace is going to go out or, you know, just what repairs the house is going to need. Right. So, so one of the things and we're gonna have to wrap up here. But one of the things we always urge our clients to do is go travel a little bit and really make sure that the place that you decide is your where you want to be and you want to buy a home to really make sure that that is where you want to be because there's a lot of places out there and the last thing you want to do is buy a place and then possibly lose money or get stuck in it and not have it be the place that you you want to be so jen thanks for joining me in the studio um when we get back we're going to be talking to christy kennelberry about um what really adds value to your home, what doesn't add value to your home, some of the inventory issues that we're seeing right now out in the market. To talk to a financial planner, go to shardfinancial.com and click on Ask Margie a question link. You're listening to the Margie Shard Show, financial health for the modern family on Super Talk 1570. Stay tuned. Margie Shard and her team can help you through life's transitions. Whether it's retirement, widowhood, divorce, or remarriage, call 810-714-5566 for a free consultation. With Shard Financial, you'll get answers and results. Her office is at 1537 North Leroy Street in Fenton. Log on to her website at shardfinancial.com or call 810-714-5566 today. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor member, FINRA, SIP. PC. Shard Financial presents Backpack Night, March 5th at 6 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Gateway Center, sponsored by Chasse Ballroom and Latin Dance Studio of Fenton. Backpack Night is a fundraiser for a project of the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan, providing over 15,000 hungry children in Genesee County with a backpack that contains breakfast, lunch, and dinner each weekend and throughout the summer. You can help. Join us for Backpack Night, where you'll enjoy a strolling dinner, a fashion show, a comedy show, live and silent auctions, and more. Call 810-577-5291 or go to backpacknight.com for more information. Buying insurance doesn't need to be confusing. Jason Orton will answer all your questions and educate you on the product you're buying. Jason Orton is an independent agent with the David Chapman Agency. They've been serving mid-Michigan with affordable personal and commercial insurance needs for over 30 years. Don't let insurance confuse you. Call Jason Orton at 517-319-8225 or log on to his website at jasoneorton.com. Shard Financial presents Backpack Night, March 5th at 6 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Gateway Center, sponsored by Chasse Ballroom and Latin Dance Studio of Fenton. Backpack Night is a fundraiser for a project of the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan, providing over 15,000 hungry children in Genesee County with a backpack that contains breakfast, lunch, and dinner each weekend and throughout the summer. You can help. Join us for Backpack Night, where you'll enjoy a strolling dinner, a fashion show, a comedy show, live and silent auctions, and more. Call 810-577-5291 or go to backpacknight.com for more information. Welcome back to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. I'm Margie Shard, and in the studio with me is Jen Vershur, Director of Operations over at Shard Financial, and Christy Candleberry of the Christy Candleberry team of Remax Grand. And to talk with a financial planner or ask a question, go to shardfinancial.com and click on the Ask Margie a Question link. All right, ladies, um, Christy, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I'm so excited to be here. And I know you got a little cold going on, so we appreciate that you still came in, and uh, we'll hope that your germs stay with you. (laughs) Not a problem. I might just sound a little different, but we'll get everything accomplished. Still sound great, girl. Okay, so we, Jen and I have been talking today about um, how much your house really affects your financial plan and your lifestyle. And one of the things we wanted to do was have you and Christy, I know you're our real estate expert, um, and of course you have all your oogles and oogles of years of experience. Um... One of the things I get asked a lot by clients, you know, before they're thinking of selling, a lot of times they'll come in and and tell me that they're going to sell and they want to see, you know, how much of um, a new payment they could afford or if they should downsize or upsize. So one of the the questions I get often is really what should they be doing to their home before they put it up on the market? Yep. It's really important, I think, that before you're looking to sell that you actually – contact someone such as myself to do a walkthrough with you on your home. Um, Little things can make a huge difference, such as decorating, uh, staging, and painting. 
um, all those things that don't cost a ton of money can actually bring value to the home. So my suggestion is to contact me before you're ready to sell and I'll do a walkthrough and we'll look at it. I look at it as a third party neutral and we can see what we can do that doesn't cost a ton of money. Right. Because I've had a lot of times I've, I've had clients come in and they start telling me that they're adding granite to their kitchen right. and maybe adding on, you know, turning rooms in their basement um, from roughed in to full blown. And, and they're doing this and spending a ridiculous amount of money, um, you know, these these projects that are quite expensive before they put their house on the market because they think it's going to bring them more value. Do things do those type of projects actually bring more value to homeowners? It depends on the price of the house. Um, what you need to know is right now our market is very low in inventory. So some of the things that you know you put in, you might not need to put in. So, so what would give me an example? So if um, you know, let's say somebody has normal countertops or yep. or the nineteen. 19- 80 countertops. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. Jen, do you still have those laminate countertops? <laughs> I do have laminate. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's say it's go, Jen's let's house. Let's say it's Jen's let's house. There. <laughs> okay. So let's say it's Jen's house. Um, you know, let's, let's say we have a 2,000 square foot home yep. in the $200,000 range and they have the laminate countertops. Yep. Does putting granite or, or should they be doing Corian or something like that? Yep. Do do upgrading the countertops really make that big of a difference? Will you get your money out of that? Yep, you will pull money out. I'd say anytime the house value is over two hundred thousand, you're going to probably want an upgraded counter because it's going to set you apart from your other competitors in your price range. So again, I'd like to take a look at it because it will depend. Maybe your bathrooms are updated, but your kitchen counters are in really good shape. Maybe we can just decorate the countertops and put some fresh flowers on there, and you might not have to do it. So again you need to really look at it first to make that final decision. But yes, usually over 200000 you'll want some upgrades in the house. Okay. Let's talk about some of the things that homeowners do that um, maybe they think are going to add value mm-hmm. and really don't. So okay. um, let's go back to Margie's dumb days, um, young and dumb. I <laughs> we call all them, have those. <laughs> I call them my young and dumb days. Uh, my husband and I just got married. Um, this is 10 years ago, but we had just gotten married and, um, you know, the housing market had drastically dropped and we couldn't really get out of our house. So what did we do without having to, to put a lot of money towards getting out of the house? So what did we do? We decided to put an in-ground pool and a spillover spa, which I think would have been really fantastic had we lived in Florida. Um, but, you know, I don't think we're, at, well, I know we're never going to see that money again. And that right. was not a smart financial decision. What what do you say um, to people that, you know, want, I mean, or what do you say to people that want to put the pools in? Yep. I, I would say if you want to put a pool in, you're doing it for your own um, self, your own leisure. You probably will not pull the value of that pool out. So you need to be prepared that if you are going to sell in the future, you're not going to get out of it what you have into it. Um, usually a pool costs twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars or more, or more, <laughs> Margie. <laughs> but you will not recoup it when you go to sell, unless you find that one buyer that really just says, "I only want a house with a pool." So you're kind of limiting yourself. And you know, we're seeing that now, where we, you know, we have our house listed with you, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it's been rented for a few years, and and now we're at the stage where we're just basically trying to get out of the mortgage that's remaining, and we're probably going to have a hundred thousand dollar <throat> loss, and. You know, Not that I, much. Come on. Uh, no, it's going to be a hundred thousand dollar loss. But but I look at that, and you know, is there is there any value? Um, is there any value that the appraiser is actually going to give us for that pool yep. being in that house? They might give you a little bit. They might give you five thousand dollars. But not as much as what you have into wow. it. I know. Sorry. Wow. Okay. So it's really reduced. Okay. So if we were talking about other parts of the country, Christy, okay. let's say we're talking about California or Florida or Texas, yep. somewhere where it's really hot. Yep. Would that pool be worth more? Absolutely. Absolutely. You look at Florida and then you look at the housing market in Florida and a lot of homes have pools. So it's almost standard. It's almost like, you know, us having a finished basement here or us having you know, something standard here. Okay. So, so let's talk about that finished basement. Yep. I've got a finished basement. I knew um, you were going to go there. I, I know, Jen. <clears throat> Jen, your basement. Our basement's finished. Your basement's phenomenal. Love your basement. Um, but so, so... Let's talk about finished basements, Christy. Yep. Do they add value? Do they not add value? Is it because we're in Michigan? 
yep. talk about basements. Yep. They will add some value. You will get it because you're actually adding square footage. An appraiser cannot count that square footage because it's below grade. But when you're looking at, let's use Jen as an example again, you're looking at her home and it's on the market and maybe it doesn't have granite. Well, we know it doesn't have granite. Just, <laughs> just kidding, Jen. Um, you know, if she has that finished basement and somebody comes over and says, wow, you know what? This other home down the road has granite, but the basement isn't finished and it's going to cost me you know, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to finish that basement. I really don't care about the granite countertops because they still look nice, or I can put granite in later. Uh, a lot of people do want that finished basement. It does add value. Um, a lot of people have teenage kids, and it's a great spot for them to um, throw them down there. Go down there, exactly. Just go so, down there. Does it just stay down there? Is it like the dungeon? Yeah, it's like the dungeon. In? <laughs> <laughs> does it matter if your basement is like a walkout basement or? Yep. A walkout will add a little bit of value, usually about $5,000, um, just because it does cost more to get that walkout in. Um, but, uh, you know, people usually, just depending on the lot, you know, if you have a walkout basement and it walks out into a nice yard or a pool or something like that, it might add a little bit more value. But all in all, a lot of people do seem to want to finish basement. So if you're debating about putting a pool in or mm-hmm. finishing your basement, yeah, what should you, you do, would Margie? say finish your basement for financial reasons. Exactly. Or if you have kids that you want to lock in a dungeon. Right. And if it's just for your enjoyment and you can lock the kids in, or better yet, get the basement done, lock the kids in the dungeon and then go out to your right. brand new pool. Right. Right. Oh, right. Or talk to Margie <laughs> and she'll do your financial planning yeah. before you put that pool in. Okay. But but overall, <laughs> the best the best way you're going to get your money out of what you're putting into your house is going to be to finish that basement versus that pool. Correct. Okay. We only have a few minutes left here, but what I want to ask you, Christy, is I have a lot of clients that ask me about additions. Yep. Putting on additions, um, do they get, is it always wise to add an addition to your house? It, not always. It depends on the neighborhood, depends on what is selling around you. But anytime you add an addition, you're you're actually adding square footage and appraisers look at dollar per square foot. So you will increase your value. So give me an example of when you wouldn't increase your value. Um, let's say you're in a subdivision where all the homes are cookie cutter. And all the homes are, let's just say, 1,500 square feet. And you put this big addition on, and now you're the largest home in the neighborhood. You might not pull out the value of that addition because all the homes are so similar. Um, In lakefront, usually you will pull value for additions. Um, For the most part, you will pull the value. Okay. Uh, It just depends. Again, call me. Let me look at it because we have to assess everything. It's not just as simple as going, yes, put an addition on, yes, put granite on, you know, yes, paint the house, yes, do this. This market's a little bit different right now because inventory is so low. So now is still, I know when you were on last month, um, we were discussing real estate, you were talking about how low the inventory was and that really it's a seller's market. Mm-hmm. Is that still true? And I'm hoping it is because, my, like I said, my house is listed for those that want yes. an awesome pool and not any of the expense of it. But <laughs> yes, it's a great deal. Call me. We'll get that sold too. We just listed it. So, um, but, but is that, is that still the case, Christy? Is it, is it truly a seller's market? And what does it that is. mean? It's a seller's market. Does it is. that mean you can price your house way over yep. cost? Or? It, it truly is a seller's market. When we look at what has um, sold over the past six months, values are increasing a little bit still. So a lot of times when we take a look at value, we can increase it by a little bit. We might have appraisal issues in this market just because inventory is so low. Right now we have about 1,500 homes on the market. And about three or four years ago, we had about 7,000 homes on the market. So what that does mean is if a buyer writes an offer on a home, um, and it does not appraise, a lot of times the buyer will pay the difference right now. Wow. We see that. We've seen that a lot lately because there's nothing else for a buyer to go buy. Is that because as well the economy's up and they have the money to pay extra at this point where maybe they didn't a few years ago? It depends on your buyer. So when you take an offer on a home, you really need to know if you're priced at the top end, what kind of buyer you're dealing with. Okay. And, and we're really running out of time yep. here, but really quick, are we still seeing a lot of sellers having to pay closing costs? Depends on the price of the home. Usually what, uh, under two hundred thousand, yes. Above two hundred thousand, no. Conventional financing, no. Okay, great. Christy, thank you so much for joining us again in the studio. Um, to talk to financial advisor, go to shardfinancial.com. If you have real estate questions, go to getchristy.com. Um, and you can contact her and her team and, and they can answer all those. Um, I want to thank our sponsors, Rebecca Bartley, Icon Mortgage, Christy Yu with Christy Candleberry, Christy Candleberry team, and Jason Orton with the David Chapman Agency. 
When we come back, we'll be talking with Rebecca Bartley of Icon Mortgage, and we're going to be discussing some of the new mortgage rules and regulations that may or may not affect you. You're listening to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. Stay tuned. Margie Shard and her team can help you through life's transitions. Whether it's retirement, widowhood, divorce, or remarriage, call 810-714-5566 for a free consultation. With Shard Financial, you'll get answers and results. Her office is at 1537 North Leroy Street in Fenton. Log on to her website at shardfinancial.com or call 810-714-5566 today. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor member, FINRA SIPC. Are you getting ready to sell or buy your home? Need some real, honest advice? A realtor who will actually get real with you? No false promises? Just plain, good old-fashioned care, trust, and advice? Then you need to get Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Cannellary of REMAX Grand. I have 20 years' experience in this area, and the number one value I bring to my clients is trust and honesty. I get real with them, and I get them moving in the right direction. Call 810-691-5914. That's 691-5914. Or go to getchristy.com. Looking for a mortgage loan and need someone that you can trust with the biggest financial decision that your family will make? Hi, I'm Rebecca Bartley from Icon Mortgage, and I have 17 years of experience in this business. I offer on-the-spot pre-approvals so that you can start the search for your new home. From zero down rural development loans to conventional and veterans loans, I can make it quick, simple, and all understandable. Put your trust in me, Rebecca Bartley, and call me today to take that first step toward home ownership. You can reach me at 810-516-4227 or go to my website at RebeccaBartley.com. Equal housing letter at MLS 311852. Stand out from your competition with a custom-made dynamic website from Shard Marketing and Branding, your small business marketing solution. Whether it's website design, social media management, referral marketing, event management, graphic design, community engagement, and business development services, Shard Marketing and Branding is your small business marketing solution. Call 810-577-5291 or log on to shardmb.com today. Welcome back to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. I'm Margie Shard, and I am in the studio today with Jen Verscher, Director of Operations at Shard Financial, and Rebecca Bartley with Icon Mortgage Lending. Rebecca, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Rebecca, Jen and I wanted to have you in the studio today because, as we know, it's a new year, and that means there's probably a lot of new rules and regulations um, from your very regulated industry. Yes, there are. Okay. So Jen and I have been talking today about um, how much houses really influence a client's financial plan in their short term as well as their long term goals. Uh, we just talked to Christy Candleberry about um, some things that could be a good investment for your home and some things that could be a bad investment from your home. But I wanted to have you on to really talk about what's what's happening out there. What's Tell me, I know you had been mentioning that there are some new um, rules regarding appraisals, and I know we've got a lot of clients that are about to put their houses on the market. Um, how may that or may not those new rules affect them? So the new rules only apply to conventional loans that are backed by Fannie and Freddie. And the new rule just states that once an appraiser is finished with an appraisal, he turns that in, and once it goes through underwriting, they put it through Fannie Mae's automated system, and it can pull up to 20 additional comparables, and if they disagree with the value, they can go back to the appraiser and ask the appraiser why he used certain comparables over other comparables, and he will have to answer all of those questions and justify why he used his comps over what they had picked for him. So are these, is this like a data bank of neighborhoods that they're looking at for comparables? Or how are they getting these values where they then say, okay, we need to go back to the appraiser and talk with the appraiser? 
Unfortunately, right now, we're not 100% sure. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of rhyme or reason to how they are pulling their comparables. This rule just came into effect January 26th, so we are still trying to figure out how it's going to affect the market and how it's going to affect the appraisals. I haven't had anything fall apart or be seriously affected yet. Um, None of my appraisals have even been asked to have the appraiser justify any of his comparables oh, so if the news. appraisers you know do their job which you know most of them normally do we don't anticipate having too big of a problem but like i said we're not far enough into it i'm mean, we're a couple weeks into it to really know how it's going to affect our marketing so have you know speaking of value of appraisals i know christy was just talking about how there's still a really low inventory um are you starting to see higher appraiser values because of that lack of inventory in the supply and demand or has there not been enough lag time to really catch that up there have definitely been increases in the market i mean genesee county had great stats last uh, this past 2014 i don't think that it necessarily there is supply and demand but unfortunately even though there is supply and demand the appraisers still have to use the comparables that are available to them so maybe six months from now is that do you think that's when we'll start to see traction on because Christy was saying some people are just paying over appraisal amount because of the lack a lot of inventory. people have a paid paid over appraised value um, it's not it's not necessarily a bad thing to do you just have to have a good real estate agent who can guide you and make sure that once you pay over that appraised value that you're still going to be okay six months, a year down the road from now because you don't want to start out underwater in a home. Okay. So if, if something comes in and, and it really is under appraised value, how how does that affect the mortgage that they're trying to get? Are they still able to get a, a mortgage if they're paying over a price? Or at that point, is it just a complete cash deal? So their loan to value, which is how much they're going to put down, can only be based upon the actual appraised value. So the sales price will have to be decreased to match the appraised value and that they will come to closing with the excess cash. Okay. So I know you said there were there was two new appraisal rules. What's the second new rule? So the second change of the appraisal rules is just that once a borrower comes in to apply for a loan, We've always just been able to order the appraisal right away. Now we do have to wait 72 hours prior to taking any payment information or being able to order that appraisal. So that'll just slow closing down a little bit? A little bit. Okay. I know, Rebecca, you were also telling me that there's some new rules regarding closing in general. Can you talk to our listeners about that as well? Sure. So now once we receive a clear to close on a file, we can close typically 48 hours later or as soon as the title company and everybody else in the transaction is ready. As again of August 1st of this year, we will have to wait 72 hours from the time we receive a clear to close. Also, the borrower will have to come in and sign a six-page document that is kind of like a pre-settlement statement that shows them all sorts of scary numbers. Can they sign that online? or They have to come in and sign it. Actually, I, I believe we talked about that a few episodes back. So, Rebecca, we've been talking um, earlier about um, our clients purchasing either a second home or purchasing um, a vacation home that they're using as an investment property. Can you tell us, like, what what are the differences with the mortgages? So, um, a vacation home is something to go on vacations and take your family up north. It can also be considered a second home. That home does have to be 50 miles from your primary residence. And the rates and down payments on those are pretty much the same as on a primary residence. Where you get different is on an investment property. And that's a property that you intend to rent out for cash flow. And on those properties, you do have to have a minimum of 20% down. And the rates are higher, but they all depend on your credit scores, how much you're actually putting down, and several other just different characteristics about your file. So if we have clients that maybe have some of those higher 5%, 6% mortgages on their vacation homes, those are primary candidates to go refinance because they're not going to get just higher rates because it's a second home necessarily. They should be able to get what it would be 
you know, the same type of rate as if it was their primary home. Is that what you're saying? It's a little bit different, but it's not a ton different. So I would say if they're six or above, absolutely now is a good time for them to refinance that vacation home. You know, talking about rates, and I know rates are, they change daily, so we're not going to quote anything here, but our rates, rates are pretty much staying low. It's still a great time to get in. Um, what are you seeing out there? Rates are still low. I mean, they're great rates. We've seen great rates for, for lots and lots of years. They've gone up and down, kind of like the gas prices. I tell a lot of my clients that when you see the gas prices go up, you know that rates have probably gone up a little bit. So that's just a good telltale sign to judge. If rates are, you know, going down low, the gas prices just went down low. It's just, I mean, it's not necessarily a way to gauge what your rate's going to be, but it's a good way to gauge if those rates have gone up and down. Okay. You know, when we look back um, the last few years, obviously 2007, 2008, 2009, um, all the way really through 2011, you know, properties were hit pretty hard up here in Michigan and around the rest of the country as well. In the last few years, things have really been on fire. Are you seeing a big difference between what people were getting approved for, let's say, two years ago versus what your clients are getting approved for now? It's actually a little bit less. There's a new rule that was put into place, and it's called qualified mortgage. And it has lowered the ratios that a borrower can qualify for based upon their income and their debt-to-income ratio. So we are seeing borrowers actually get qualified for less as opposed to getting qualified for more based on those ratios being lowered. That actually really surprises me with the economy picking up and uh, more people employed. Um, I guess I would have thought that more people were starting to feel more comfortable where they thought, okay, maybe I can go for that higher payment. Um, it, it's just, it, does that shock you, Jen, knowing what you know about our clients and their financial plans? I don't know. It actually sounds safer, you know, so that people don't get in trouble and, I guess, you know, get in debt for more than they can afford. Safer, I would agree. Um, but as we know, um, through behavioral finance, that right. not everybody does what's safe. Um, That's true. You know, so I, I would think that in our Visa Visa MasterCard type of American population that we have, uh, you know, I, I would think that that would be more, that more people would be feeling more confident, I guess, to make those higher payments. But... And there are things that they don't take into consideration when looking at that. It's just a flat debt-to-income ratio you are allowed to have. Um, and so it actually, it's not a smart idea. It's not Absolutely a good idea. It, it harms the housing market, which is trying to grow and expand. And when you have borrowers that have your 780 to 800 credit scores, they're putting 25 30% down, have tons of money in retirement funds. We don't need to worry about being safe for them or protecting them. They know how to protect themselves and they know what they're doing. But our industry is highly overregulated. So that's kind of what happens when you put into place all these regulations. So safety of the consumer is really where these regulate, I mean, the regulations are really trying to save people from some of their own bad decisions. Honestly, the regulations are coming from a bureau that has no idea about the mortgage industry. They were put in place to be the watchdog of the mortgage industry per se, and they've just come up with all these rules and have no idea how bad the unintended consequences are for the consumer. Okay. Rebecca, we've really enjoyed having you on. Um, in order to talk with Rebecca, go to RebeccaBartley.com um, or 810-516-4227. And again, Rebecca will answer her phone on the weekends or nights. I won't, but Rebecca will. Okay. Um, thanks again for listening to the Margie Shard Show. Thank our sponsors, Rebecca Bartley, Icon Mortgage, Christy Candleberry, Christy Candleberry Team, and Jason Orton with the David Chapman Agency. Um, you're listening to the Margie Shard Show, all about financial health for the modern family. If you'd like to talk to a financial advisor, please go to www.shardfinancial.com and click on the Ask Margie a Question link. Thanks so much for listening. We hope that you come back next week. And we'll be sure to make sure that it's entertaining for you. You're listening to the Margie Shard Show on Super Talk 1570. See you next week.